when you do computer graphic, when you do computer computation, computation. Yeah. you uh, there there are ways in which you designate the various uh, concepts which are involved in how qubits flow through a circuit. Yeah. And you make what are called circuit diagrams. Yeah. Do you understand that? Very well. Oh, I, I, you have to teach me that because that's where I... Oh, yeah, I, 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 yeah. I can show it to you in a few minutes. Okay, not today, tonight, no, but let's it, meet yeah. again, okay. Yeah, so I mean, it, it takes a while to get used to it, but once yeah. you get used to it, you, you can almost read it off like you do a Feynman diagram. Okay. It's very simple once you okay, get well used that, to it. Okay, well, that I want to learn. you have to first figure out what every term means. And yeah. I actually, that's my good, that's what I do well. Okay, you're going to write a book yeah. about that? That that well, itself is a book. That's what I'm writing right now. Okay, good. Okay. That's what I'm good. writing right that's now. That's good. Because I, yeah. yeah. It's not giving you... As soon as I see those circuit diagrams, my, my eyes glaze over and I reach for my delete button. No, no, no. <laughs> I know, the, I know, the, the I know. The diagrams I know. are really important. I know they are, and, yes. Uh, and, and once you see how to, once you see them, you can just read them like, like, like that. And that's what these guys do. Okay. They're all, they've been doing it for years. I've been doing it for a couple of days. And I'm finally okay. catching up to Okay, good. Do. Good, excellent. Uh, so there are, anyway, so they're basically how to understand that. And I was trying to, under, I mean, especially Deutsch. Deutsch has written a brilliant paper, a seminal paper, something that is that is a year, light years above what anybody else has done. And that's, he's postulated a new way to think about how to put a nonlinearity into quantum physics. Oh, well, that's the key thing. That's the key thing. As soon as you do that, you have faster than light communications. Yes, the door opens. The door opens, yeah. The door yeah. opens completely. And the other way that you can do it is, of course, the um, uh, post-selection. Yeah, yeah. But that's that's not the really Seth Lloyd. That's yeah. non-linear. It's yeah. linear. It's still uh, linear. It's still linear. Still in that framework. Okay. Bob and his friend, the guy don't argue that they're equivalent, but they're really not. Deutsch has really put, come up with something brand new that has not been written down before, and it has to do with density matrix formula formulation of yeah. qubits. Yes. In other words, you, every qubit is really an operator. It's a density matrix. It's not, it's not a, right. a ket or a bra. Yes. But it's a ket bra. Yes. And that's a very different from a bra ket, as you yes. know. Yes. So uh, when, you, when you're dealing with these things in that formulation, he's come up with a way in which you can show that there is a self-consistency argument Yes. where if you have a wormhole or any basically time loop in your circuit, the thing you have to show is that what comes out of the wormhole that goes into what's called a quantum gate and then emerges from the wormhole and goes into a quantum, it goes back, I, 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 sorry, comes out of the wormhole, goes into a quantum gate, comes out of the quantum gate, it goes back into a wormhole where it goes back in time, the consistency is how do I show that what's coming out of the quantum gate going into the wormhole is exactly what came out of the wormhole back in time? They have to be the same. Yes. And how do you do that? You came up with a brand. And that's the nonlinearity. That's the nonlinearity. Yeah. Yeah. That's the nonlinearity. And that opens Pandora's box. Yes. And, and, and the thing which makes this so neat and so much fun is that all quantum gates are what are called unitary. You know what that yes. means? Yes, you know. Of course, I know what that means. Yeah. So, uh, so because they're unitary, um, uh, there's nothing in the gate itself which is which is funny. It's yeah. perfectly good quantum mechanics. Yes. But when you start doing what are called taking traces, right? Because that's what you have. You take traces when yes. you have the density matrix yeah. to yeah. get a state. My my PhD traces. was on density matrix. What's that? My PhD was on density matrix formulation of liquid helium and all that. Oh, so, really? Oh, yes, oh well, yes. then this should be, this should be yes, no, yes. no problem with this. Yeah. So, um, on Zaka, Penrose, and all that. So the whole idea is that uh, what you have coming into a quantum gate is a density matrix of what's called the closed time-like curve yes. matrix and your input matrix, whatever that is yes. that you want to transform. Both of those go into the gate. Yes. What comes out of the gate, though, has been switched. Yes. So what goes out of the gate into the output is something which really came from the quantum gate. I came came from the uh, wormhole that got mixed up into the quantum gate. Yes. And what goes back into the wormhole is something that you sent in from from the input data. Your input, you have input data, and you 
input data, which is good stuff that you put in. You say, okay, I want to, I want to calculate this, put this in, and then you have density matrix coming from the wormhole. Both you have these two things coming in. Okay. Yes. What happens is inside they swap, yes. and now they come out. And now what was originally data that you put into the wormhole is now been swapped, and it's going to go. I sorry, into the gate. It gets swapped, and now it's going into the wormhole, and then it comes out. So now you have to figure out how do you, what do you do? So you, what you do is you, when you multiply U, the unitary matrix, by row in, cross, mul cross multiply data in uh, times U adjoint, okay, that's your output. Yeah. Your input is, is row in, data in. Your output is the cross multiplication of those yeah. two, multiply it on both ends by the U, which is a unitary matrix. What you do is if you take a partial trace, if you trace over the input data, you get the output, you, you get as your output the actual density matrix that is going into the closed time-like loop. Right. And now setting that equal to what goes in to the... Is your nonlinear self-consistency. Because, yes, because... The, see, what, what's so beautiful about this is that you would think it's arbitrary, but it isn't. No. It's, it's been... Once you've described... Once you say what your input data is and once you know what the gate is, the stuff that goes into the wormhole and comes out of the wormhole is prescribed. It's determined. It's not just ad hoc. It has to be some fixed point theorem or something. Th that's like that. where it comes yeah, from. Yeah. It comes from the notion of a, all it's a fixed topology. Point. It's topology. Like well, it's a sort of topology. In a way, but fixed point is nothing mysterious. It's nothing more than saying f of x equals x. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Can I find a function of x that will yeah. equal x, yeah. whatever x is? Yeah. That's called a fixed point. I mean, yeah. it's a ridiculous terminology to have, but there's more mathematics to that. But yeah, yeah. Cool. All okay. right, guys. I'm